now on to money. Uh, did you find it difficult to get financial backing? Given the fact that I had Virgin on my CV, a good concept which showed profit and a good return on investment, it was fiendishly difficult to find funding. And it took such a long time, and all the while, the, the various investors we were speaking to either said, no, I won't meet with you, or uh, yes, I'll meet with you, and then I'll use the time to tell you how bad I think your idea is. Um, oh, how disheartening. It really was, and a lot of people said to me, you know, London is run on alcohol, and I said, I know it is, but not everybody, not all the time. Surely there can be a space for a break. Um, and then, you know, some entrepreneur, some investors said to me, you know, oh, veganism's just a fad, it's never going to catch on. Um, and these are all guys in their kind of 50s and 60s, and they control the purse strings in this country. You know, unfortunately, that's the case. But I did come across, in fact, it was a woman who was the first major independent angel investor. Um, and she was brilliant and said, to begin with, I'll, you know, if you, if you test the market with a pop-up, if you can show that you can deliver a, a, a margin, not an overall profit, because you need scale for that, um, but just a margin in terms of you're able to sell the food for way more than you ca it costs you to produce it, um, then I'll put more in. And it gradually came like that. So um, it was quite a slow process. Um, but it was the third pop-up that we did, um, which finally, uh, we took £25,000 in one month, and we were turning customers away, and it was in this little uh, restaurant, Amazing. yeah, in Holborn, um, in 2015, January 2015, um, and then uh, we got the first site, Notting Hill, in the summer of 2015, so it all then started to happen from there. Was there a moment where you just thought, to hell with this, I've got to give up? Yeah, every day, I think that. <laughs> um, it's just so difficult um, to make money when you're starting out, and especially in this competitive market, and when you never really have enough money to do what you need to do. Uh, yeah, I think that all the time. And then I think, now's not the time to give up. You can't give up give up now, everyone loses their money, including myself. Um, and they've got two sites as well. Yeah, so we're, and every, every day we're, we're moving forwards. So really I think that's just fear. I think that's just fear talking and then I have to try and overcome that. And um, I often get that all at about four in the morning. So I've said to myself I'm not allowed to make any decisions before 7am. So it gives me a time to get my equilibrium back. So the sort of fear of the night time that comes in, um, once I've had a coffee, I'm up and running, had a shower, then I've got my balance back and I've got like my warrior back. And it's like, no, come on, we can do this. <laughs> Four in the morning is the worst time, waking up and worrying about stuff. Then. It's do you awful. find you then can't get back to sleep? Yeah, and you're so weakened by it. And um, it's so weird that. I mean, they call it like the kind of witching hour, don't they? I don't know there's some scientific thing about that but certainly when you're dealing with a lot of financial stress you know where there's not enough money to pay everybody um, and you've got to magic some money out of somewhere that is really really stressful and your back's against the wall um, and I found it almost impossible to sleep during those times but hopefully that's behind us now I found you know I found a way through I did magic the money out of somewhere and I borrowed from Peter to pay to Paul, and back from Paul to Peter, and all of those sort of things. Um, and now, you know, the big thing for us was we raised £300,000 on Crowdcube, and that's been enough money for us to now open our third site, and that should give us the stability that we need. And where's that going to be? It's in Covent Garden. Amazing. I know. Um, it's brilliant because the, um, the landlord, Shaftesbury Estates, they own loads of Kingley Court, Carnaby Street, and Neil's Yard, and Seven Dials, and they said, we've got a spot exactly right for redemption, and the back of it is in Neil's Yard, and the front of it is in Seven Dials. So, um, Congratulations, that is so cool. <laughs> Thank you. So this is our big moment yeah. now. And, and will you think you see a turning point on the balance sheet? Um, because is it about having as many sites as possible? Uh, this site will double the size of the company overnight oh, wow. and so it's death or glory, um, hopefully glory, 
and um, yeah, it will make all the difference. It will mean that there's enough revenues to cover the central costs, which will mean break even across the whole business. Um, we're not looking to expand to be like cost of coffee, but perhaps one in every major city. So what's next for Redemption? Well, we have strong ambitions. We want to be a force for good. We always wanted to be a force for good. We want to leave a positive legacy. We want to make it sexy and cool for people to make plant-based decisions to help save animals, uh, the planet. Um, we hate plastic, want to be part of the eradication of plastic. Um, you know, ideally we want to work with um, social groups and charities you know, to help make the world a better place. I think one of the things I've had to learn to do is, is walk before we can run. So that's all very well and good, but you kind of have to have a stable organisation first. So hopefully by six months time we will be stable and then we can start looking a bit more um, externally towards all the people we can work with to try and save the world. Well, it is seriously exciting time, so good luck.